Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on Reign of Grace, and we're going to do the cover right now. So I just love this print. It is so delicious. Um, I hated to give these up, but man, this is so pretty. So we're going to use this as the base for the cover, and this is 12 inches, and so I'm going to wrap it around and use as much of this print as I can. And then I'm going to take this cut apart and add it as a feature on top. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to add some tape to the spine. Um, a general rule of thumb is if it's an interactive um, page or piece of paper, in this case the cover, um, I like to use tape instead of glue. The tape tends to last and the glue at some point will let go of the paper. <clears throat> just because you're using it so much. Here we go. Sorry, I'm stalling. I laid my tape down and threw up my tape chair tool down. Forgot where. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hope everybody's doing well. This is a very pretty collection. So I was trying to think, what would I use this for, you know, um, if I did an album in it? And we're coming upon graduation season. So I was thinking of, you know, a girl graduate um, could make a small uh, keepsake album for um, the graduation, the ceremonies, and any of the family get-togethers. So I was thinking of dads and grads because uh, we're coming into that season. <clears throat> okay, now like I said, I like to use tape on uh, any of the interactive elements and that's going to be all the way across the spine. And I'm going to go ahead and add tape here too. Now over on this side, I am going to, it will be uh, stationary. It'll be the flat front of the, of the uh, album. So I'll be using some glue over there. Oh, did I go outside the lines? Yes, I did. <clears throat> There we go. Okay, I'm going to burnish all that into place. And then we'll position it on the book. If you're new to the channel, all my projects are set up uh, with a playlist. And if you look for the title of the paper, or if you type in the name or the brand, I mean, um, you'll find the list of uh, projects. And the way each project is organized is the first video is the walkthrough, flip through. The second um, is the base album, base page build. Every subsequent video is adding interactive elements or decorator paper to the project. So, and each video is a page. So you never have to look for um, a page in the middle of a video. So it'll be um, in, the, in the title of the video, it'll say Stamperia or whatever brand, name of paper collection, followed by page, and then followed by build. Now, what does build mean? Build means the sequence in which I built the book itself. So a lot of times in order for me, it's just my process. Everybody's different. Um, one of the ways I make sure I distribute the colors in the collection evenly throughout a project is sometimes I'll build it out of sequence. And why does that matter? Wow, that pulled up the paper and not just the backing. Um, that matters because uh, you could cut through something inadvertently early on. So sometimes I'll do like page one, page eight. Um, and if you do the rest of the album um, in sequence, page one, two, three, you get to page eight. It may be that you don't have a big enough, big enough piece of paper because you cut through it in a different direction. Um, so the build can be helpful. <clears throat> okay, there we go. I'm going to probably have to add some glue to that. <clears throat> that was a little unusual. I don't think that's ever happened to me. I'll come back and add some glue if I need to. Okay, so now we're going to add glue all over here. 
working quickly because uh, art glitter glue dries pretty fast. the edge towards me so I can see that better. Okay, now because I wrap the spine before I press it into place, I want to slightly open the book so the front and back page I want to open to about a 45 degree angle and that way when I close it completely it doesn't have to stretch as far and if I just wrap it as is um, what happens when you open it is you get some buckle here so as soon as I get this in place I'm just pressing all the glue down <clears throat> so that's about 40 so that's you're 90 degrees, it's about 45 degrees. So I, it's difficult, but I'm gonna hold it at a 45 degree angle while I go across and lay in the areas that are taped. <clears throat> okay, now I'm gonna burnish it. Here. And it'll feel snug. Close it gently. And while you're closing it, you're basically stretching the fibers in the paper. <clears throat> okay, so there's our cover. Okay, and we are going to use this pattern to finish off the back. And it looks like I need to turn just a little bit off. Go ahead and do that. I want a little um, piece of black to come through here. Yeah. A little more. That should do it. Let's go ahead and add some ink. I'm using Mahogany by Cotter Puff. This is my go-to color. Uh, when you build as many albums as I do, um, you just kind of give up on trying to match the cardstock and the ink. Um, and by the way, over time, I've come to really just love the the elegance and just looks clean when you have black or white or cream. Those are the three colors I use for my base albums. I tried this on, on cream. It completely changed the look of the paper. I liked it better on black. There's a lot of yellow in the pattern that you don't see until you lay it on plain cardstock. And I wanted to kind of soften that a little. <clears throat> and putting it on black kind of makes it look deeper and richer. And let me see if I've got some cream cardstock handy. I'll show you what I mean. <clears throat> so this is cream. I think it actually looks better with white. So there's your black and cream. It makes it much more subtle. So sometimes I'll just go and try all three and see which one I like the best. Okay, so now we have the cover finished. We're going to work on the inside. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, lay down a piece of black cardstock here because I am going to color block um, this page. So I just lay it right inside, mark it, and trim it um, to fit just inside this area. <clears throat> oh, 
Oops, I think I overturned a little bit, but that's okay. And I'll, uh, is it? No, it's not going to be okay. It needs to be more precise. Let's see if I can use it over here. Yep, I can. Excellent. Um, I'm going to have four panels. So you'll have a black cross through the middle of it. Perfect. Good grief. Okay, looks good. So for this project, I'm using a 12 by 12 pad with 12 by 12 uh, patterns to eight by eights. Um, and unfortunately, I've already got my backgrounds and my patterns mixed up, but I am using both. And this comes from the, pa uh, the pad. And I think this comes from the patterns. I could be wrong. I like it better that way. So this is what I'm doing, is alternating this pattern. Like so. Okay. So I'm going to start by just roughly laying this out. It looks like I need to trim these squares down just a little bit more. I do. Okay. Let me trim these down, and then I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, I'm back. So I went ahead and put this panel in. I added my black, and we're going to do the front now. So I am actually going to do the opposite. I'm missing my piece. I'm missing a piece. Uh, I must have dropped it somewhere. Let's go ahead and add these three, but I'll, I'll locate it at some point. Okay, now I gotta locate that piece and see what I did with it. Is it one of these? No. All right, I know I cut it. It's not that. That's too small. All right, I'll locate that and I'll put that down. Um, I'll do that offline. And then on the cover, I've got this piece. Um, 
which I'm pretty sure came from the collection pack. I am going to cut some chipboard to put behind it to um, add some dimension here. And then I fussy cut this from another piece uh, as well as this. So I'm going to add these elements to the cover. And I may add some other things, some uh, sayings or sentiments. But this is basically what the cover of the album is going to look like. So I'll be back shortly. Hey everyone, I've got my cover laid out. So I want to show you. So from the collection pack, there is a wreath of flowers. And so I fussy cut um, those flowers out, but it is just a big wreath on the 12 by 12. It's actually wider than the cover of the album. So I just uh, fussy cut around it. And this, this is pretty much what I've decided to do. So some of it's ink, some of it's not. I think I've got this done, but not this. So I'm going to ink and glue as I go. <clears throat> so I don't lose um, my layout. <clears throat> I think it turned out pretty. I actually tried several different things before I settled on this. Sometimes my covers come together really fast, and this is a case of where I tried several things. I just couldn't seem to get the scale right. But I'm happy with the way this turned out. I really didn't want the castle on the front because I think it makes it a little specific. Um, but it's still kind of like a dream or, you know, it still works for the idea of, you know, starting your future. Um, at any rate, so that's that. And I've got two pieces here. Um, but I did try several things, and that's this is what uh, actually looks the best. So that's what I went with. Our weather really took a change and now it's uh they're predicting some rain so we went from uh, 90s last week <laughs> to possibly having some rain and thunder tomorrow that's this is pretty wild for san diego we're usually much more predictable <clears throat> it's been kind of a wild year a lot of flip-flopping and a lot of rain for us which is good just unusual. <clears throat> Sorry, this is really tedious. But it does make such a difference. If you don't do it, they just don't pop. But it is very boring to watch, so I apologize for that. I thought I had done more before I turned the camera on. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're going to start with these two, which I think are going, both of those are going under the cover. <clears throat> Slightly. I'm going to try to work really quick. To show. Yep. And then
And I've got a little room to tuck under here if I want, but I didn't have that much space. Actually covering up more of the orange than I thought I would, but that's okay, I think it looks right. Okay. <clears throat> This is popped, so I've got chipboard all over the back of it. places next. So this is half on, half off, so I'm just going to hold these edges until they grab. Just take a second. There we go. <clears throat> Beautiful. And then I have this lovely little butterfly. Got some scraps over here I need to disposition. And I still have more flowers. Um, if I felt like I needed more, there's, there's more to tuck around, but I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna sit with it for a little while and make sure that's all I wanted, but I do want to add this guy somewhere. <clears throat> I don't really want to cover up that gold piece, but it does look good to have a layer there, so maybe I will. Okay. Okay, now the other thing I did while I was away is I added this piece from the spine. So this is from the collection pack and it was just three um, butterflies in a row and I just matted it on some black cardstock. I really like the way that looks. And then the back is just simple as before. Of course, there's my spacer that keeps it from falling over on itself. So that is what we have for now. Looks like I forgot to ink right there. That's okay. Um, yeah, so we're going to get started on the inside now. I think that turned out pretty lovely. Hope you guys like. Be back soon.